What's up, COL? How you doing today? Hopefully, today is a great day in the name of Jesus Christ. Hopefully, everything is going smooth, comprehensive, and no negative, negative entities in your life today. <laughs> this your man, C. Mill, C from the D coming at you with everything that's real. Today, your man C. Mill would like to talk to you about why does the narcissist pick the oddest places to start a fight with you? Why does the narcissist pick the oddest places to start a fight with you? The narcissist will fight you over little of nothing or nothing. They will start a fight with you just to rattle you, just to displace you, just to make you feel uncomfortable, just to see if they can push your buttons, just to see if you're going to bite, just to see if they can change your mood, change your emotions. They love having power like that over you. They get a big kick out of it. You know what I'm saying? This goes, this coincides with the push and pull method. You know what I'm saying? But they will start a fight with you anywhere. You already know that. If you've been dealing with a, nar a real narcissist, you already know. They'll start a fight with you in the oddest places. And for the for nothing, or they'll if they don't have anything in front of them to start a fight with you about, they'll bring up some old stuff. Some old stuff you ain't even, they wasn't even thinking about. But see, that devil and that demon that's on them, refreshes their memory so that they want to start a fight with you for something just just something they have to pick something but it is to dismantle your mental mind state it is to rattle you up mentally and spiritually it is to those endorphins of fear they try to keep those endorphins of fear fresh in your head like I am to be feared I am to be feared I am to be feared because they banking on the idea that you're going to fear the fact that you don't know when they're going to blow up and what they're going to blow up about so they love you like walking on eggshells you know tippy toeing walking on eggshells you know they love that they love it because they feel empowered by that. They feel like I can change your mood. They feel like I can change your whatever peaceful thoughts or rattle you up from whatever you was thinking or however th you thought it was going to go. You know what I'm saying? They love it. You know what I'm saying? You know, so any and everywhere they don't care about shaming themselves they already shame themselves you know what i'm saying millions of times you just don't know about it they just shame themselves to death <laughs> there is no shame left to be had with them <laughs> but they know that you are a good person they know that you live on good morals and good you know what i'm saying good morals and good um virtues, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? If you are, if, if a narc is attached themselves to you and you are the target, you're not a trashy person because they wouldn't have picked you. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't have picked you. Rarely do you see an alligator attack an alligator, but it does happen. But, you know, most narcs, they either don't like each other or they'll hook up with each other to go against somebody, you know? That's about it, you know. But, you know, the real reason that they do it is to shame you. It's to bring shame to you along with rattling you up, getting you out of character, you know what I'm saying, displacing you, letting you know that they are to be feared. They are the ones that control you. We can, you know, they feel like they control your emotions. Like, I control your emotions. I control whether you're in a peaceful mind state or not. And don't you ever forget it either. You know, that's how they think, you know. 
So, they do it mainly to shame you. You know, with that shame, you know, embarrassing you in front of other people, strangers, you are somewhere far or somewhere real nice, you know what I'm saying? You think they won't do it, they they just letting you know. Nah, nah, I will put I will do it. I'll pull it off right here, right now. I set it off like Queen Latifah. You know what I'm saying? They don't care, man. They don't care, man. They 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 don't care. And they wanna let you know that you should always be on your tippy toes and be on them eggshells because you never know when they're gonna pop off. Like Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember late night, man. You be up, man, flicking through the tube. You see old Peter pop off up there, you know what I'm saying, with the prayer cloth. <laughs> you know. <sighs> oh, but yeah, man, that narc, man, they are here to destroy you. And they will start a fight with you anywhere they please. They don't care if y'all was at the White House for dinner. They don't care if y'all was at, you know what I'm saying, somebody prestigious house or at an elegant dinner. They don't care. And y'all know what I'm talking about. You can't say you've been with a narc and you don't know what I'm talking about on this one. You know that. You know they'll, they'll pop it off. But they are there to shame you because that shame that they feel inside, like I said, a projection. So they, they want to project how they feel about themselves onto you. So what's the best way to do that? To make up fake scenarios and project them onto you. Start, start arguments. Start fights. Keep you on your toes. Keep you on eggshells. You don't never know when I'm pop off. I pop off about this. I pop off because you looked at that girl. I pop off because you, you know what I'm saying, whatever. Because you're looking at that dude. Where is you looking at him for? You want to be with him? You know, pow, you know, they try to, they keep you on, 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 man, they just go off. You know what I'm saying? For no reason, man, and you know that. But they are there projecting that shame, that inner shame. Because, see, they done did stuff and got so nasty with your friends, with your family members. Man, they done did stuff, man, that they, whew, they did some stuff now. And if you think they haven't, man, you fooling yourself. That narc don't care about they self. So they definitely don't care about shaming you. You know what I'm saying? So they would project that shame onto you and pro project that dis disarray onto you. You know what I'm saying? And where you can't be at calm and be at peace because they're never at peace. Because they're always getting tormented by the demons. I told you that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's a lot of spiritual warfare going on with these narcs, man. And with you with the narc, because they're trying to either cast spells, do witchcraft, or voodoo. They're summoning demons. The demons is coming on them, telling them to attack you. You know what I'm saying? It's all type of stuff going on in their head. They'll never share it with you, though. But yeah, it's bad. It's real bad. So don't ever be fooled and think that the narc is going to be on chill mode. That's why you got to get away from it, because they'll never just be on chill mode. They always on some demonic, they always got a demonic mission to feel. And by you being the target and sitting in their face, you will be the one that the mission will be carried out upon. So that's why you have to leave. That's why you got to get away. Change your life up, start over, switch it up. This your man, C. Mill, telling you stay away from that shame with that nerd. Hey, I appreciate all my new subscribers. Uh, the guy that subscribed today, his name was uh, Help. I forgot his first name, Help. But thank you for uh, subscribing. Y'all have a blessed one. Hit that like, like and subscribe. Hey, thank God for everything good in your life. Have a blessed one. I'll see y'all on the next one, man. Peace.